Arkansas won the toss and elected to defer, so Tennessee will receive the opening kickoff from Tom Latterett, and it's Peerless Price standing back at the three-yard line. A huge game in the Southeastern Conference and with larger implications on the national front. And it's Peerless Price from the three. And out to the 26-yard line. He was tackled by Derek Johnson after a return of 23 yards. T. Martin, as hot as anybody in the country at the quarterback position right now, the junior from Mobile, Alabama. Outstanding thrower in recent weeks, including last week against Alabama Birmingham. And he completed 18 of 25. Two weeks ago, he had a record-setting day against South Carolina when he completed 23 of 24. Over the last two games, he's completed 84% of his passes. He comes out throwing the peerless price, and he's pulled out of bounds by Orlando Green after a gain out to the 30-yard line. The rest of the Tennessee offense, Travis Henry starts as part of the rotation of tailback today, and peerless price has had back-to-back 100-yard -back receiving games as Martin has heated up. And the offensive line has been outstanding throughout. Mercedes Hamilton is a team captain, and David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, says he's really been part of the glue that holds this team together. Henry takes the pitch, lowers his shoulder into Kanoi Kennedy, and Travis Henry is very close to a first down near the 35-yard line. Now the Arkansas defense, one of the best in the nation against the run up front. Randy Garner, Melvin Bradley, Ryan Hale, and a great pass rusher in C.J. McLean. Two linebackers, J.J. Jones and Jamel Harris. And they have players who are basically linebackers and defensive backs in the bandit, Jeremy Flowers, and the rover, Zach Painter. I've seen them perform functions resembling what safeties and linebackers ordinarily do. Third down inches. And that Martin collided with the fullback, Bryson, and I don't think Travis Henry got there. He was stopped short by the Razorback defense. It was Philip Crosby who was in at fullback who collided with T. Martin, and he did not pick up the first down. Johnny was just a little bit too close to the line of scrimmage. Crosby, the fullback, and as you said, it just broke up the timing of this play. Plus, Arkansas had good penetration on the play. That's why the defensive surge beat the offense and come off the ball. We are a foot short. And you can read Philip Fulmer's lips. He sends the punting unit on. So a great start for Arkansas because there are still some around the country coach saying they really haven't played a top quality opponent as obviously they're going to see today. Well, there's no question the schedule that Arkansas has played has been softer than Tennessee's schedule. A lot of people think that's going to make the difference. One of the things both of these teams are going to do today is play field position football. With the conditions on the field, there's going to be a lot of strategy in terms of where the ball is on the field. David Leverton, the punter, has it down to the 34-yard line by the snapper, Kevin Gregory, just a 31-yard punt. A good start for Houston Nunn, and now his offense gets ready to take the field. Led by Clinton Sterner, the junior from Baytown, Texas, having a record-setting season for the Razorbacks. Excellent size for Sterner at 6'2", 220 pounds. And the crowd trying to help the volunteers as their speedy defense is on the field for the first time. Sterner with a play action pick, and he throws short of his intended target. He was looking for Michael Williams. The rest of the Arkansas offense, Madre Hill will alternate with Chris Chikuma, Nathan Norman, a blocking fullback, Anthony Lucas, a very big play wide receiver, averaging 26 yards per reception. It is a veteran outstanding offensive line with four seniors and one junior. Brandon Burlesworth is an All-American candidate at right guard, and Grant Garrett is having an All-SEC season at center, according to Houston Nutt. Second down and ten. Williams, the motion man. Madre Hill tripped up by Eric Westmoreland after a gain to the 30, the gain of perhaps one. An underrated front four on defense for Tennessee with Ellis Coleman, Walker, and Terry. 
The linebackers are the three leading tacklers on the team. Thompson's number one, Wilson number two, Westmoreland number three. And in the secondary, the coaches thought Steve Johnson was a question mark at the start of the year, but as the year has gone on, according to John Davis, the coordinator, he's played very well in every game. Deion Brandon, emerging star at safety. Here comes the blitz, and Sterner threw it away. Al Wilson came on the blitz and put pressure on Sterner. Well, Al Wilson is the emotional leader of the Tennessee defense. He loves to blitz. That's really his strong suit as a linebacker. And any time he's in a position to bring the heat, number 27, he's going to bring it. He comes unblocked right up the middle. He causes Sterner to rush with the ball. Chris Aiken is the putter. They found him as a junior college transfer over the summer. Houston, that's how he we had a putter. And I took the job, but Aiken's done a very good job. This is a good kick. Jermaine Copeland caught it with very little room from the coverage team. And he's tackled immediately by Hubert Loudermill. Back here in Knoxville, while you were away, Arkansas punted down to the Tennessee seven-yard line. And on the second play from scrimmage for Tennessee, Travis Henry, or rather Travis Stevens, fumbled. He was stripped by Zach Painter. D.J. Cooper recovered at the 25. Madre Hill, a couple of carries to get him at this point to the 14-yard line. And now on first and 10 from the 14, that was Hill again, leveled by Raynock Thompson. Let's go back and look at the fumble by Travis Stevens, caused by Painter. Zach Painter, 37, he nice in from the side, and oftentimes when you come in from the side on a running back, it jars the ball loose. That's exactly what happened. Arkansas, a very quick, aggressive team up front, gets to that fumble. And out of that pile came D.J. Cooper. So now Kurt Sterner has them second and 11. They've not been a great red zone team. Below the national average in scoring touchdowns. Here comes Sean Ellis. Sterner throws. Caught. Emmanuel Smith breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Arkansas! in the flat it was a huge counter play to kind of slow down that Tennessee defense his first touchdown of the season the junior from Clinton, Mississippi Tyler Waterett adds the extra point he's perfect in PATs this year 34 for 34 here's the bootleg pass but watch the missed tackle by Dwayne Goodrich number 23 he should have made the tackle as should it safety touchdown Razorbacks Travis Henry back in it. Tailback after the big fumble by Travis Stevens. Deflected pass, and that one is incomplete and almost intercepted by Zach Painter. C.J. McLean knocked it down, and Zach Painter almost picked it off. Well, T. Martin just takes a real short drop from the center and tries to throw the ball, but anytime you're thrown over those big defensive linemen, you have to find a lane to throw through. He didn't have a lane. Zach Painter almost with another turnover for Arkansas. Uncharacteristic early mistakes by Tennessee. Possibly penalty on roughing the punter. And now Martin not pick up the blitz. Quentin Caver sacked him. Another key mistake. We've seen the fumble, uncharacteristic of one of the best teams in the country in turnover margin. The big penalty, and now this offensive line, usually outstanding against the blitz, let Caver come right through. Caver, number 53, he, as you said, Sean, just comes through the A-gap. Nobody picks him up. The back's trying to get there and just can't get him quick enough. Arkansas is by far and away the quickest defensive team that Tennessee has seen all year long. Guarantee you. Quicker than Florida, you think? I, I promise you they're quicker. They're not as big, but they are really fast up front. Now third down and long. They need to get to the 40. He's going for longer than that and has a man open. Cedric Wilson. Down at the 25-yard line. Cedric Wilson is a 
Tennessee Volunteer, who certainly has come up big lately. He's got 19 catches on the year, averages over 15 yards. He just went straight down the field. Orlando Green, 21, just gets beat on the coverage. Wilson does a good job of concentrating on the ball and then makes a nice run after the catch. A 50-yard gain. Wilson's really come on in recent weeks. He was not a featured receiver early. Two receptions in the first four games, 17 over the last four. After the pick of the 50, Martin set again. Back of the 33, Ryan Hale credited with the sack. The senior from Rogers, Arkansas. There are just too many players right now coming through gaps for Tennessee to be happy with their offensive line play. They've got to steal these gaps up. You count these guys off. You've got all these shirts right here. And watch them come. As soon as that ball snapped, they put two guys through one gap. Another guy comes. Sean Bryson, 24, looked like he missed the block on that particular play. The pressure that Arkansas is applying right now is definitely affecting Tennessee. Second down and 18. 7 nothing Arkansas. With just three and three minutes left in the first quarter. Here comes the blitz again. And the pass intended for Wilson and complete out of bounds with David Barrett in coverage. Arkansas continues to just bring as much pressure as possible on T. Martin. This is the most pressure certainly that T. Martin has been under since the Florida game for sure. And, and, and Tennessee's trying to adjust with three-step drops. They're trying to get rid of the ball quickly. They're also trying to make sure when they get over on the sideline that those gaps are covered by either linemen or running backs so that penetration doesn't continue to affect the offensive team. Three wide receivers on third and 18. Wilson, Price, and Copeland. Short drop. Quick throw up for grabs. Intended for Copeland incomplete. Again, David Barrett in coverage. You're talking about the line play coach in an interesting matchup in this game. The defensive coordinator for Arkansas. There's Keith Burns. And Mike Barry, the offensive line coach at Tennessee, each in their first year in their current positions, they coached together the last five years at the University of Southern California. I know them both very, very well, and uh, they both do a good job. Keith Burns loves to bring the, the pressure. It's, a, it's kind of an eight-man front pressure defense. We're going to get after you. And Mike Barry probably coaches offensive linemen as aggressively and, and as good as anybody in the country. Jeff Hall trying a 49-yard field goal and hit the upright. One of the best kickers in the nation, Hall, the senior from Winchester, Tennessee, had plenty of leg from 49 on a wet field, but it hit the upright, and not much has gone right for the number one team in the nation to this point. Still 7-0 Arkansas in the first quarter in Knoxville. John, the remarkable Arkansas turnaround has been propelled to some extent by the fact that they're such a better running team this year than a year ago. They're rushing for over 100 yards per game more this year than they did a year ago. They were the worst rushing team in Division 1A football last year, and problems on that running play. They tried to hand it to the fullback. Crowd roaring now after the illegal motion penalty makes it first and 34. Back at the nine-yard line. Sterner from the goal line going deep. Flag thrown. Lucas has it. Out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Holding on the defense. Tell me it's the fly. First down. They had 34 yards to go for a first down, and they got it on a 38-yard game. Sterner, three out of eight for 55 yards and one touchdown. Smith in motion. Madre Hill banged down by Fred White, the strong safety. After a gain of one. Arkansas has kind of an unusual design. The fullback lines up only three and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. He's tighter than most fullbacks. As a result of that, he can get on linebackers quicker, and he can deny penetration by those linebackers. And one of the things in studying Arkansas is the depth of that fullback has definitely been a big advantage for their team this year. Play action fake by Sterner. Looking deep, throwing deep, looking for Emmanuel Smith, and he has it at the seven-yard line.
Clint Sterner actually underthrows the ball, but when you the ball is underthrown, the advantage is always to the receiver. Houston not going deep again on Tennessee. Numerous times today already they've gone deep on that Tennessee defense. They're trying to send a clear-cut message. You better back off. That's what they're trying to say. And they're being real successful with it right now. Two big catches for Smith. The 14-yarder for the touchdown. That 45-yarder as Arkansas inside the 10 again. Just inside the 8-yard line. First and goal. And Hill stopped for a loss. Penetration by Raynock Thompson. Bear in mind, just seconds ago, Arkansas was backed up to its own 9-yard line. Looking at first and 34. Those two big passes, how dramatic the field position has changed so quickly. And one of the things Tennessee has to do right now is just not fold under all this pressure. You know, they're the number one team in the country, and this underdog Arkansas team has come out. They're so fast and so aggressive. You just need to keep playing hard. It's a long, long game. Sterner in trouble. Lofts it up in there. Double coverage. It's intercepted by Deion Grant. hasn't made many mistakes this year. He's only had five interceptions on the year, but this was a mistake. He's in a scramble. He needs to pull the ball down, fight back to the line of scrimmage, or throw it away. He clearly throws into double coverage. Deion Grant, one of the best safety men in the country, goes up high and takes that ball for the interception. Deion Grant has made play after play for Tennessee. That's his third interception of the year. Travis Henry carries up to the 24-yard line. Clint Sterner last year had a big problem with interceptions, in part because he was under pressure so often. But last year he threw 13 interceptions, and he says the biggest difference this year is I've learned to throw the ball away. Well, that's a lesson he <laughs> didn't remember well enough that time. Well, you know, it's funny when you get under that pressure of the game and all that kind of stuff, but this guy's done a great job avoiding those interceptions all season. So and he tried to get outside and could not. He was banged out of bounds at the 25-yard line by DeAndre Berry. And it'll be third down and five. And the clock is running, and it should not be. The officials now finally getting to stop the clock, but then we went out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A lot of time went off the clock, and the officials are going to huddle now. John, there's just no question that the intensity of the game from up here just feels like Arkansas came out on fire, and they were so quick and so aggressive, both with their defense and their offensive teams, and they got Tennessee a little bit on their heels. But as I stated, you know, you play for 60 minutes. Philip, Philip Fulmer in Tennessee, they're ranked number one for a reason. They've been in tough games. They know how to come back. And uh, I think they just need to get their team settled down and play to the intensity of the game. That was a huge interception. Oh, huge, huge right there. Arkansas has a chance to go up minimum 10, maybe mm -hmm. 14 to, to nothing. That was a great play by Deion Grant and a very bad play by Clint. And he put 11 seconds back on the clock. 21 left in the quarter. Martin with a defender at his feet for those incomplete for Peerless Price. Martin has absolutely no time to throw. And Tennessee will have to punt again. The, the, pr the pressure that, that Arkansas has generated from the very beginning of this game has really disrupted T. Martin and the Tennessee offense. And this is not T. Martin's fault. He is under constant hurries and protections, not only sacks, but certainly under real pressure. And a quarterback's got to feel relaxed, get his feet planted, be able to throw the ball. Leverton punting for the third time in the quarter. Rossi Morreale got away from it. Sean Bryson again downfield at down at the 38-yard line. A 36-yard punt with no return. Chris Jacoba now at tailback in place of Madre Hill. And he is met immediately by Al Wilson. No gain on the play on the final play of the first quarter. At the end of one quarter, the score, Arkansas 7 and Tennessee. Smokey not all that happy after one quarter. Arkansas Woo! ranked number 10 in the nation. Leads 7 to nothing. And the Hogs begin 
The second quarter is second and 11 on their own 38-yard line. Clint Sterner throwing the one-on-one -on -one coverage. What a catch by Lucas! Anthony Lucas down the sideline, and he scores! Anthony Lucas just uses that great speed. This is a guy that's averaging over 26 yards per reception coming into this game. Steve Johnson is pressed up there in man-to-man -man coverage. Lucas gets off, and it's just a great throw. And he goes up, uses his athletic talent, and pulls it away from Johnson for the touchdown. And Clint Sterner redeems himself after that costly interception with that great touchdown throw. 62 yards to Lucas, the junior from Toledo, Louisiana. Todd ladder up, adds the extra point. throws an interception to Zach Painter. Again, the pressure forced a hurried throw, and Zach Painter has his team leading fourth interception of the year. Tennessee tried to come on a misdirection pass. They wanted to fake a play fake one way, come back on the misdirection pass. T. Martin gets pressure from number 55 right in his face. There's just nowhere to go, and he throws off balance, and Zach Painter comes underneath with the big interception. T. Martin, he's got Carlos Hall, 55, right in his face. It's hard to throw when you've got that pressure. What a season for Painter. Moved from cornerback to the rover position this year, and he has really responded. Madre Hill with the carry on first down. They started at the 46, and he went to the 43-yard line. Martin on the phone. He had been interception free lately. That's his first in 88 passes. Draw to Madre Hill and nothing there. Stopped at the line of scrimmage again by Al Wilson. Tennessee, as we mentioned, sixth in the nation in turnover margin, best in the SEC coming into today. And they've already turned it over twice. They have taken it away once on the Deion Grant interception in the end zone. Michael Snowden and wide receiver, number 27, out wide with Michael Williams. Sterner setting up a screen to Madre Hill. And Eric Westmoreland, back in the game after leaving earlier with an injury, made a big play because that looked like a promising screen when Hill caught the ball. There's no question Westmoreland played off the block with the Arkansas offensive lineman and makes his play. And as you said, John, this was going to go for another big Arkansas play. 42 right there, Westmoreland. Good play by him, using his hands, coming around the block and making that play. Fourth down, they left their defense in here, thinking there might be a fake from Aiken. Leon Grant, the deep man for the punt, and Aiken does the job again. That's the second that he's had go out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. They'll mark this one at the nine, a 32-yard punt. Philip Crosby, in a pullback. Wilson, the motion man, almost went into him. Flag down as Henry fights for extra yardage he has the first down at the play stand but there is a flag thrown by the official along the line of scrimmage on the near side I think it's going to be on Arkansas it looked like uh, Jamel Harris the middle linebacker offside on the defense five yard penalty repeat the down You know, to get a good running game going, your wide receivers have, have got to be unselfish. Look at Wilson here, trying to cut down the great safety for Arkansas. Kanoi Kennedy, great block by him. Crosby remains at fullback. Henry, tackled by Zach Painter. 
After a short game, on first and five, he got very little just past the line of scrimmage. Well, and Philip Fulmer and Houston Nutt, we have two of the leading candidates for virtually every major Coach of the Year award. They've already been named, both of them, as two of the ten finalists for the Football Writers National Coach of the Year award. Crosby remains in the fullback. Short drop, and Martin throws it toward the aisle, well over the head of Jermaine Copeland. It would be difficult to choose from just Nutt and Fulmer when you had all these other coaches who've done a terrific job this year. It's going to be a tough choice for the football writers. No question, and, and, and the season's not over. The last three games of the year is going to go a long way to determine who the coach of the year is going to be. Well, Snyder's team on the short end of a 17 to 7 score against Nebraska right now. K State in the coaches' poll was tied with Tennessee for number one this week. Tennessee number one all by itself in the AP poll, number one in the BCS rankings. Moving along the line, no flags down. Martin goes down back at the 19 yard line. Carlos Hall. Credited with the third Arkansas sack of the game and his fourth of the season. He's a redshirt freshman from Mariana, Arkansas, with great physical ability, a 4'4", 40, 42-inch vertical leap. Well, the pressure from Arkansas today has just been relentless. And at halftime, Tennessee is going to have to be able to go in the locker room. Mike Berry, Philip Fulmer, they're going to have to fix the offensive line problems or the running back problems, whatever they might be, and get that pressure handled if they expect to win the game in the second half. It's going to be a real chore because Arkansas is coming from everywhere. And movement before the field goal try. Hall was lined up to try a 36-yarder. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Saw the sack graphic a moment ago. Just 12 sacks given up by Fulmer's offensive line coming into this game. Three already today in a quarter and a half. And now it's a longer try for Hall. They hit the upright from 49 yards. This is a 41-yard attempt. Out of the hold of Benson Scott. Right down the middle. And the number one team in the nation is on the board. It's 14 to 3 Arkansas. And the Hogs will get the ball back with plenty of time remaining here in the first half. 6.23 as Hall gets ready to kick off. Very short kickoff. Out of the run by Hubert Loudermilk. And Fred White made the tackle for the University of Tennessee. First time since then, this late in the season. Unbeaten teams have gone head-to-head -head in this conference. This is Chris Chakuma. Shoved out of bounds in Tennessee territory at the 42-yard line. Al Wilson pushed him out after a pickup of 32. Ten Tennessee's defensive backs today have had trouble tackling. Steve Johnson, number 34, he's going to miss Chakuma in the open field. This should have been about an eight-yard gain, but instead Chakuma makes Johnson miss right there and he takes it all the way down the sideline for a big big play once again for Arkansas. Kim is a junior from Montgomery Alabama. His father is from Nigeria and still lives in Nigeria. They communicate by computer every now and then. Kuma again tackled by Fred White after a gain to the 39 yard line a pickup of three for Chikuma, who missed most of last season with a serious back injury. He missed the last seven games of the year. When he first arrived at Arkansas during his first action, he had a real problem with fumbling. But he's managed to overcome that in part by carrying around the football with him during the offseason. You know, it helps you. It really does because you get a feel for it in your hands and you, you press it against your body and you learn how to carry it. He fumbled three times in the game here in Knoxville between these two teams in 1996 when the balls hammered the Hogs. Right now it's the Hogs doing the hammering and it's Chikuma. 
With a first down inside the 25 yard line. Dwayne Goodrich, the tackler, after a gain of 15. Tennessee's defensive end comes up the field on a heavy pass rush, and as a result, he opens up a cut, cutback lane. Jakuma sees it with his eyes, and he takes it back into that void caused by that defensive end being upfield too far. Well, when you get the ball deep to tailbacks, and they have that vision, they have the advantage of seeing those creases that create themselves in those defensive fronts. Madre Hill in for Chikuma, and he's tackled by Raynock Thompson. Near first down yardage again, about two yards short at the 17-yard line. We mentioned Chikuma's back problems. Madre Hill has overcome two major knee problems. He was all SEC back in 95. He rushed for a school record 1,387 yards. But in the SEC championship game, he ripped up his knee. Then as he was getting ready to come back in the spring of 97, he ripped up the ACL of his other team. This two full seasons and has come back this year and is running just as well as he did before. Movement along the line. Might have been Darwin Walker offside for the second time, making contact with the center. No question about it. Clint Sterner, the quarterback, drew him off with his voice inflection. Dead ball. Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. You know, it's funny when you play defensive line, even if you're lined up right over the ball where Darwin Walker is, he's right on the ball, but that it's that quarterback's voice that you get used to, and you and you gotta concentrate on the ball if you're a defensive lineman, not on that voice. And the penalty gives Arkansas a first down at the 11-yard line. So they can get another first down without scoring. Chris Chikuma back in. Marvin Caston at fullback. Chikuma follows Caston. Nice cutback. And Chikuma's down to the seven-yard line, a gain of four. Raynock Thompson ran him down from behind. The Arkansas offensive line is really doing a nice job controlling the line of scrimmage. This drive in particular, Houston Nutt knows that he's got a lot of power and experience in that offensive line. You're talking about guys that have started an awful lot of football games for the University of Arkansas. Second and seven. Play action fake on the bootleg. It's Sterner throwing on the run. And it is caught for a touchdown. Anthony Lucas. Clint Sterner does a great job on this bootleg pass. He avoids Raynock Thompson, who comes unblocked, but Sterner just runs away from him, and he's able to get the ball into the end zone to Anthony Lucas. It's a real individual effort by the quarterback, Clint Sterner. And Lyra up adds the extra point. So Lucas now has the reception record for a season and a career at Arkansas all to himself, and Arkansas has an 18-point lead. Travis Henry rumbles out across the 30. Coach, you think it's important, very important, critical that Tennessee scored points before the half? I think it's critical. I don't think Tennessee is a good come-from-behind type team this particular year. That doesn't mean they can't, but that's not their forte. Their forte is a running game, ball control, field position, no turnovers. And that hasn't gone that way for them this, this half yet. But if they can get a score here, it'll really help them in the locker room at halftime. They have two timeouts remaining. Henry carried for no gain, stopped by David Barrett. Martin throws, man, open, caught. Jermaine Copeland with a first down out to the 49-yard line before he was pummeled by Kanoi Kennedy, a pickup of 18. And a flag thrown for roughing the passer. They'll add 15 to this play. Well, this is certainly going to help Tennessee's field position. So it'll play action pass. Jermaine Copeland just runs a kind of a corner route. 
and the ball is well thrown by T. First Martin. Foul. Roughing the passer on the defense. It'll be a tackle on 15 yards from the end of the run. Late hit. It's a good call by the official. The referee is there to protect the quarterback, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's making sure there's no late hits on the quarterback. Looked like Sasha Lancaster was guilty of the late hit. And David Cutcliffe says when Kanoi Kennedy makes a hit, you don't have to see it, you can hear it. And that was certainly the case as he put the hit on Copeland. Let's go to New York. Here's Tim Brando. Westmoreland loss on that play of the yard well unlike the first half the Arkansas line on this particular play didn't get any push and they weren't able to control the defensive front of Tennessee Tennessee seems to have a little quickness in their step they seem to have a higher degree of intensity at least on this initial series than they did at the opening of the game Crowd roaring on third and 12, four wide receivers into the game for Arkansas. A four-man rush picked up. That pass is short and incomplete. Intended for Emmanuel Smith. And one of the few unimpressive possessions on offense for Arkansas. Boy, that, that is the truth. That's the first real unimpressive possession. They just didn't seem to have quite the speed and the intensity they had in the first half, and Tennessee seemed to have more of it. Chris Aiken will punt it away. Tennessee should get excellent field position. Two men back deep for Tennessee. Moving along the line of flag down. The Volunteers look to be offside. Excellent punt by Aiken. This is Jermaine Copeland from his own 39. The ball comes out, and Arkansas has recovered. Eric Branch ripped it out. A 45-yard punt. There is the flag at the line of scrimmage, but it looked like Tennessee was offside. Hubert Loudermilk recovered the fumble. On the defense, penalty is declined, fumbles recovered, first down. Willie Miles was across the line of scrimmage early for Tennessee. And Copeland fumbles the third turnover by Tennessee. They had a great record in that regard coming into this game. Well, there's no question this is a huge turnaround after an outstanding series by the Tennessee defense. Copeland gets stripped by number seven, Eric Branch. He rips the ball out. Then it becomes a free-for-all for the ball. Arkansas Jeremy recovers. Jeremy Flowers who recovered, not Hubert Loudermill. At the 34-yard line. What a big play that is. Madre Hill stuck by the safety, Fred White. Tennessee had the crowd in it. They're getting great field position, very good field position anyway, and another big mistake uncharacteristic of Tennessee. Well, as you mentioned, Sean, they were such a good team coming into the game in the turnover area. They were six in the country uh, in plus turnovers, and they just have played uncharacteristically of themselves thus far in this game. It is wet, it's raining, the ball's slippery, but it is the same for Arkansas, too. 
can see how well coached Arkansas is as a team in ripping the ball and how well coached they are in general, but they really stress trying to force turnovers. Another offside penalty, it seems, against Tennessee. Sterner throws. Is it a catch? Yes, it is. Anthony Lucas, another big grab at the 18-yard line, a gain of 17 if it stands. Offside on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Anthony Lucas has been awfully hard for Tennessee to cover all day long. Whether it's man to man, whether it's zone, it doesn't matter. Anthony Lucas can take you deep or he can find a seam in the zone, which he does here. He's open, he has great concentration on the ball, and he's fearless when he goes in there because he knows Deion Grant is going to sting him when he catches it. Four catches for 125 yards receiving for Lucas. His fifth 100-yard receiving game of the season. Five out of nine. Chris Chikuma. Tackled by Raynock Thompson. At the 16-yard line, Jeff Coleman had Chikuma around the legs. And the second half has belonged to Arkansas. They've outscored their opponents 164 to 47 in eight second halves this season. We well, talk about making some second half adjustments and going into the locker room and coaching and getting things squared away. That's an example of it. Doesn't get any better than that, I don't think. 89 to 23 is their advantage in the third quarter after those halftime adjustments. Sterner on the rollout. And he threw it away at the feet of Joe Dean Davenport. Good decision that time after an interception on a similar play in the first half. Nowhere to throw it, he threw it away. Not a great percentage, but boy, 194 yards on nine completions, a huge number. You know he gets excellent coaching, not only from Coach Nutt, but he has the benefit of working with Joe Ferguson, former Arkansas great, one of four coaches on the staff, including Houston Nutt, who played at Arkansas. Of course, Joe went on to a terrific career with the Buffalo Bills. And he's been impressive in... The cadence today several times has drawn Tennessee outside. Third down and eight. In the flat. It is juggled incomplete. Nathan Norman, the intended receiver. Fred White had the coverage. Here comes the field goal unit for the Hogs. This was well defended by Tennessee. Fred White did a great job breaking on the ball in the flat. It's a good series by the Tennessee uh, defense once Arkansas got advantageous field position. Darwin Walker breaks through there, puts a little pressure on the quarterback, but Fred White with a nice play in the flat. Clint Sterner certainly has been a little bit off target with passes, but he's made the big play. He's been able to hit the long pass. Todd Lederet trying a 33-yard field goal. And it is good for the senior from Pensacola, Florida. Points off turnovers. Three Tennessee turnovers converted into 10 Arkansas points. But that was a big hold to a field goal there to keep Tennessee within two touchdowns. It was. And not only are points off turnovers critical, but you have to also consider the momentum it takes away from the team. Even if you don't get points, you've taken away their opportunity with the ball. You've taken away that offensive momentum. And that's critical as well. On first down, Travis Henry ripping through. Fighting for every yard to the 48-yard line. Tanoi Kennedy made the tackle. Henry's a bruising runner, as he demonstrated there. And as a result, he tends to wear out the defense in the second half. Henry over 100 yards again. Now here he goes again. Chopped down by Kanoi Kennedy, who saved the touchdown at the 31-yard line. 120 yards rushing now for Henry. After that gain of 17, he has 120 yards on just 15 carries. Sean Bryson, 24, is the lead blocker. He's the fullback. He makes a great block on J.J. Jones, the linebacker. That is what enables Travis Henry to have the room to run. Sean Bryson hasn't carried the ball today. He hasn't caught a pass but he has been very unselfish in trying to help his Tennessee team. They pound away with Henry. That's been the story throughout the second half ever since Jamal Lewis went down with the knee injury. They've used Stevens and Henry in a mixture in the first half, but Henry has done his damage 
in the second half. His numbers coming into today, 327 of the 450 in the second half, using his size to run over the fatigue defense. And this is where Tennessee is good. When they're running the ball, then they can mix in their play action passing, give T. Martin the time he needs to hit his receivers. Everybody up on the line for that Arkansas defense. They try to strip the ball and cannot, and Henry spins away. For another first down to the 17-yard line. Randy Garner made the tackle. David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator at Tennessee, said trying to tackle Travis Henry after a while, he's going to wear you out, and it's hard to tackle the ball. Arkansas is trying to strip that ball instead of tackling the ball carrier, and as a result, Henry makes a little spin move, rushes for the first down. Four straight rushes for Henry. A total of 52 yards. Flag down. Martin scrambles. And is tackled by Randy Garner with help from Harry Wilson at the 15-yard line, but there was a flag thrown I think by the official along the line of scrimmage on the far side. John, I think we're going to have motion on Tennessee. Offside, on the nope. defense, five-yard penalty, the piece of down. Houston, not not very excited about that call, but usually those line judges, they can see those guys. They they, they can see them lined up off sides. And oftentimes, defensive linemen, they get they want to crowd that ball, and they misjudge the geometry of where they're at, and they simply line up off sides. Tennessee on the move. The touchdown would get them within a touchdown. This is Henry, stacked up immediately. On first down and five, he got nothing. Ran into D.J. Cooper, junior from Mesquite, Texas. He plays nose guard and defensive tackle for Arkansas. And there is Cooper. The defensive coaches for Arkansas say he has all SEC ability. But for much of the season, he's been a backup. Playing behind Melvin Bradley. David Peckwith, the Tennessee offensive coordinator, says Bradley is the most active defensive lineman in the SEC. We haven't heard his name called very often today. That's Henry again, powering toward another first down. Harry Wilson made the tackle. There is a flag on the play. I think they got Tennessee. Nope. Let's see here. I thought they called Tennessee for holding. Might have been a face mask. Uh, the Arkansas players indicated it was against Tennessee, and I thought it was in the area of holding, but but you're very, I think you're right. I think now the Tennessee players are signaling it's against Arkansas. Well, this is the only signal that'll matter from Harold Mitchell. We got a face mask, five yards on the defense. Finally, Harry Wilson, number 44, the senior from Helena, Montana. Well, you talk about a power back. Travis Henry showing that power. Good body lean, leaning forward, knocking him north and south. First and goal at the four, the number one team in the nation. Down by 14 points for the second time today. Trying to get within a touchdown. Will Bartholomew now. The pullback leading the way for Team Martin. Touchdown! right here and this great blocking by by the tight end Eric Diago and the fullback Bartholomew T Martin has an easy easy run into the end zone he's such a versatile athlete taking advantage of his legs Jeff Paul's leg has the extra point they love it on the Tennessee sideline the balls back within seven Championship Series picture. 
That was Henry for another first down. Randy Garner and Jeremy Flowers tackled him at the 31. They picked up the first down by a yard. John, I think you really have to credit the Tennessee coaches. Mike Berry, the offensive line coach. Philip Fulmer, the head coach. David Cutcliffe, the coordinator. They went in and made some, they made some adjustments at halftime. The Tennessee offensive line is starting to really come off the ball. This is their style of play. There's David Cutcliffe from the, there. First and 10. Martin going for the tying touchdown. Incomplete. Looked like it hit Cedric Wilson around the face mask or shoulder pads. Orlando Green had the coverage. It'll be second down and 10. Cedric Wilson working hard against Orlando Green. You can't really see there, but it looked like Cedric Wilson had a little hand contact. Nothing, nothing that causes a penalty, but you got to be careful when you're an offensive receiver. You can't push off. Career day for Travis Henry. He's rushed for 143 yards on 22 carries. 143. Career best for the sophomore from Frostproof, Florida. Here he comes again through a hole. He's down close to another first down at the 22-yard line. Tackled by Melvin Bradley. Travis Henry's being led through the hole by the right guard, Cozy Coleman, 315 pounds, six foot five. He's able to punch a hole in the Arkansas defense and allow this power back, Henry, to fall forward for a good positive game, but he better be careful. The ball is awfully loose. Yeah, that's a fumble. That was a fumble. But they had ruled him down, obviously, because nobody made an effort to get it. And there's T. Martin on the keeper for the first down. On third down and less than a yard, he pushed forward to the 20. Christian 10 volunteers. They're driving for what they hope will be the tying score. Well, and if you're Arkansas right now, you've played such a hard game. You're right in the thick of this game. You've got to find a way defensively to try and get this offense slowed down like you did in the first half. Right now, the momentum, the intensity is with Tennessee. Somebody at Arkansas has got to come up with the big play. Here by Bonnier, now the fullback, two tight ends in the game. Henry, wrapped up by Melvin Bradley, the senior from Barton, Arkansas, one of the best defensive linemen in the Southeastern Conference. He almost wasn't eligible to play this season. He had to pass 15 hours of classes in the summer to remain eligible to play. We're at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, sold out, more than 106,000 on hand. We'll watch the 10th meeting all time between Tennessee and Arkansas. And this is the most important. Although they did play once in a bowl game. This has national championship implications today, perhaps. Out of the flat. Great one-handed catch by Curtis Price. Short of the first down as he goes out of the 12. Pushed out by Orlando Green. Peerless Price makes a great adjustment on this ball. The ball is it's a quick little out route. The ball's thrown behind him, but he reaches back with that right hand, uses outstanding concentration. You talk about having an athlete at wide receiver. That's what Tennessee has in number 37, Peerless Price. He's out grasping at his ribs. Second season in a row with 40 plus receptions for Price. Third down, two at the 12. Option, Martin Peets, first down. He squirts down to the five-yard line. Zach Painter had him by the shirt, but couldn't stop him short of first down yardage. T. Martin does a great job of keeping the ball in this option. He comes down, Arkansas had played it very well, but T. Martin, being a strong runner, breaks two tackles, falls forward. Hundred and sixty three total yards. Thirteenth play of the drive. First and goal from the five. Two tight ends. No fullback. Martin in trouble and tripped up for a loss by Kanoi Kennedy. The safety bursting through. A big play for the Arkansas defense. A loss of two. Arkansas bringing as much pressure as they possibly can will bring the free safety. He's right in the middle. He's going to walk up. 
and be the blitzer. There's just an unblocked man who gets that penetration against the option play. He's hard to, to account for in the offensive front. Arkansas coaches say Atwater, uh, rather that Kennedy is the best safety at Arkansas since Steve Atwater, who's gone on to be a seven-time All-Pro in the NFL. That is nearly a lateral, but it is a forward pass, and a disaster waiting to happen all the way. Wound up incomplete, but first it looked like Martin had trouble with the snap, and then his pass was not healed by Copeland. That's very nearly a lateral. As you can see there, though, a forward pass. Correctly ruled an incompletion. Then he paid the price when Kennedy belted him. What a hit by Kennedy. Houston Nutt knows right now the game could very well be on the line. I think that hit is another example of why Kennedy reminds them of Steve Atwater. Yeah. Kennedy starting his 25th straight game today for Arkansas. Big defensive play here. Martin, throwback screen. Great move by Curtis Price, and he's knocked out of bounds by Zach Painter at the four-yard line. That was an unusual formation by Tennessee. They went with no backs. They had wide receivers all over the field. In Arkansas, you got four wide receivers all down here. And Peerless Price over here. And they throw a little screen, almost a touchdown. But it's a great recovery by number 37, Zach Painter, to save the touchdown. And with 16 minutes left in regulation time, Philip Fulmer wants to take the points. The field goal from Jeff Hall. From a tough angle, the right hash mark, a 21-yarder. No problem for Hall. And the ball's inch closer. Now down by four in the final minute of the third quarter in Knoxville. There's three brothers who are in coaching, including the brother Danny, who's on the Arkansas football step. Sterner throws, man open. Caught! Lucas again in front of Andre Long. 15 yards and a first down for the Hogs. Arkansas did a great job giving Clint Sterner plenty of time to throw this ball. The offensive front of Arkansas, watch him pass protect. He's got all day long to try and find Lucas on the sideline. Anthony Lucas with a little post corner round and he goes high for the ball. Tennessee just has not been able to match up with Anthony Lucas today. He's just been a bit too much for him. Now Wilson has gone out of the game for Tennessee. Lucas, seven catches, 156 yards. On first down, Chakuma gets very little. Eric Westmoreland, Corey Terry on the tackle. So Lucas has 156 yards receiving today. Last week against Ole Miss on homecoming in Fayetteville, he had 177 yards receiving on just four catches. Well, Houston Nutt came into the game telling us during the week that Anthony Lucas is awfully hard to cover one-on-one. -on -one. We don't think anybody in the league can do it. You're going to have to double cover. And when you do that, you take people out of your run defense. So that's the pressure that the Arkansas offense puts on you. Now Wilson back in for the Tennessee defense. Big difference here, obviously, between a touchdown and a field goal try. There's Wilson with the sack. Just scrapes from the middle. He comes on a middle linebacker scrape. And he's so hard to block. He's right there. Just take a look at him. He's the guy to follow with your eyes. He's going to just scrape over and then watch him accelerate to the quarterback. He's got that great closing speed. First sack for the Tennessee defense today. The tenth play of the drive for Arkansas. They take him more than five minutes off the clock. He's trying to set up a screen. It's Joe Green Davenport, and it's incomplete. The tight end couldn't catch it. And it was going to be an Arkansas touchdown. There is absolutely no one in the defense. The Arkansas lineman had picked up the defensive back, knocked him to the ground. There was no one left. It was a great call by Arkansas. Watch the left side of the screen. Sterner's going to draw everybody there. Now watch the offensive linemen creep out here. They're going to knock Tennessee to the ground. And look, they got a chance to run right down that sideline. Todd Lauderette to give him a seven-point lead. And it's blocked! Deion Grant blocked it. Al Wilson has it. Al Wilson down the sideline. Out of bounds! 
at the 36-yard line. in that secondary for Tennessee. Watch him in the middle of the defense, number seven. He's gonna go up on the middle block, vertical jump. He gets up high. The ball is kicked a little bit low. It's a great individual athletic effort by Deion Grant inside. I mean, it looked like he jumped 14 feet in the air. I mean, Deion, great safety for us and an unbelievable player and our, our up front guys got great push and we had the middle block on and he went up and he got it. at that point both defenses were playing pretty good T. Martin and first down going for a big play to price it's incomplete David Barrett had the coverage Boy, now what do you do if you're David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator? You took a good shot at him on first down. It's incomplete. Earlier in the game, they'd come back on second down and try to make a run, pick up four or five yards, and put T. Martin in a good passing position for third down. It'll be interesting to see the call. And in the field goal, Lauderette has it blocked this season, and it was a big one, but now it's the defense rising up. They stopped Tennessee on three plays in a punt of the last possession, and now they're trying to cover up the damage done by the block field goal. Here's Mike Mayock. Hey, Sean, I have focused entirely on Peerless Price the last two series since he hurt it. his lower left rib. And what's happened, and this has carried through 100% of the time the last two series. Every time he's been in the game, it's been a pass, and they have substituted for him on every rundown. Keep your eye both on his rib and the formation and the changes. Thank you. Looks like he is hurting, and he's in now. Would be a passing down on third down and 10. And if you're Tennessee, you have to be talking about, are we in four down territory? Do we want to kick if we don't make yardage here? Are we, are we in field goal range, or do we want to come back and play two downs to make the first down? Three wide receivers blitz, flag down, and Jamel Harris with a big sack back at the 50-yard line. There is a flag down to the line of scrimmage, however. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat the down. And Arkansas be continues to bring the pressure. Jamal, Jamel Harris, he's the blitzer. He comes untouched. You just can't turn people loose like that and expect your quarterback to have any kind of chance. What a series defensively by Arkansas after that huge field goal block by Tennessee. The Arkansas defense has been phenomenal this particular series. The penalty stopped the play, so they had no choice. Ordinarily, you would have declined the penalty, taken the sack, forced fourth down. Tennessee catches a break in that it has another chance to convert the third down. Third down and 15 at the Arkansas 41. Tennessee, the number one team in the nation, playing number 10 Arkansas. Arkansas leads by four, five and a half left. Martin throws well short of Cedric Wilson. And it looks like Tennessee will punt with all three of its timeouts remaining and five and a half minutes left. T. Martin gets hit late. Arkansas ran a nice inside stunt with their defensive lineman and brought a linebacker. They come clean. Melvin Bradley, 41, just isn't blocked on a little cross stunt inside. Here's Leverton trying to pin Arkansas in deep. Rossi Morreale standing at the 10-yard line. High punt. Takes a great bounce for Tennessee. It'll be down inside the two-yard line. A perfect punt by Leverton of 40 yards. The number one team of the nation on the ropes late in the fourth quarter at Knoxville. Here's the tailback behind Nathan Norman. Sterner play action out of the end zone. Throws out to the 10. And some breathing room for Arkansas as Michael Williams makes the sliding catch and 
credit Houston Nutt with a gutsy call out the end zone. Boy, you're not kidding. You talk about being backed up on the one yard line, and all of a sudden you throw a pass there and throw a nice little quick hitch for a positive yardage and gives yourself some breathing room. Block under five minutes remaining. Three timeouts left for Tennessee. Three as well for Arkansas. Second down and one. Tennessee's done a good job, particularly in this half, against the run. There have been nine Arkansas running plays that have been dropped for a loss. Takuma managed to find a seam there and pick up the first down. Out to the 13-yard line. Arkansas has really done a nice job today offensively. First of all, they went after Steve Johnson, the cornerback. Steve Johnson gets hurt with a concussion. He leaves the game. In the last four passes, Arkansas has gone after Andre Lott, number 30, Johnson's replacement. So they really are doing a good job of trying to get matchups and knowing what personnel is in and out of the game. Saw the CBS Sportsline stat of the game for complete college football coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. Chakuma makes an arm tackle. Burst free. Chris Chakuma, first down Arkansas, dragging tacklers out to the 31-yard line. 18 on the run for Chakuma before Deion Grant made the stop. We talked about Chris Chakuma and his power. He is a 225-pound back himself. He has really outstanding cutting ability here with a little spin move, and then he just powers down the field, dragging Tennessee players with him. Two big defensive stands by the Arkansas defense here in the fourth quarter. And now it's the offense digging out of the hole at the one-yard line. Moving along the line, but no flags. And Chakuma is stopped for a loss by Eric Westmoreland. But the clock is the friend of the Hogs at the moment. Right now, Tennessee has only one player in the front seven who started the game. Everybody else a second teamer. And that pass is caught by Jodine Davenport, short of a first down at the 39. The Hogs will need two to move the chains. Huge play here, third down and three. Play action fake. Sterner trying to turn the corner. Out of bounds. And it looks like they're going to mark him out short of that marker. The orange marker is right on the 41-yard line, and it looks like they'll give Sterner the 40 and a half. And it was right in front of Houston Nutt. Corey Terry and Dwayne Goodrich reacted quickly. It looked like when Sterner turned the corner, he would get that first down. Well, it was a great call by Houston Nutt. Little naked bootleg off the fake inside. And Sterner's racing for the first down. But watch 23, Dwayne Goodrich and Corey Terry, 22. Watch them close. They've got closing speed. And it's, it's you can just feel that mark. It's close. I'm surprised Sterner didn't hold that ball out. Just a little bit late mm -hmm. with it. And they're almost a yard short, according to the referee, Harold Mitchell. <laughs> Arkansas will punt after the timeout. Chris Aiken is the punter. High snap over his head by Benji Mahan, and alertly booted through the back of the end zone by Chris Aiken. Flags fly. Benji Mahan is the snapper, and Aiken had no chance. And that's what Aiken wanted when he kicked it. He just didn't want to allow Tennessee to have the ball around the 10-yard line. He made the smart play. It's two points for Tennessee. They're down two, and they'll get it after a free kick. Benji May had 64. The long snapper just got it high. It just came out of the, the, the snap just so high. And of course, Houston not knows, but an alert play by Arkansas to take the safety because you're still ahead in the game. You've got two and a half, three minutes to hang on there. But now Tennessee can win it. Big plays still to be made with 2-12 remaining. Second down and nine for midfield. Short drop by Martin, and he threw it away. And the last three or four times on the field, Philip Fulmer's offense has been totally out of sync. Well, there's no question Philip Fulmer really doesn't like that call. Peerless Price turned inside. Philip Fulmer thought he should have gone deep. You can see 
how hard it is when you're coaching these final minutes of a big game like this. Both these guys work so hard during the week getting their teams ready to go, and you're down here to crunch time. Longest field goal of Hall's career, 53 yards, so they have a long way to go yet to get into field goal range. Right now, they're just trying to get a first down. Third and nine. And Martin throws incomplete behind Cedric Wilson, who slipped as he made his cut. Now Tennessee's just got to come up with the best fourth down call they've got in the arsenal and know they've got a couple timeouts in their pocket. They can maybe get the ball back one more time if they don't make this first. Wilson is open inside. The ball's just thrown behind him. And Martin so accurate the last two games has been off the mark today. 10 for 26. Tennessee five out of six on fourth down this year. This is huge, fourth down and nine. Perhaps the season hanging in the balance. Martin zips it over the middle and complete. Broken up by David Barrett, intended for Peerless Price. It's a nice job by the Tennessee offensive line, giving T. Martin enough time. Peerless Price is going to run an inside route. David Barrett just makes a nice play. The ball hits Peerless Price. Barrett right behind it. Knocks it just a little bit loose. T. Martin getting hit. <laughs> Houston not trying to calm them down. Among those who needed to be calmed down, the defensive coordinator, Pete Burns, you can understand why. He'd be excited. Two timeouts left for Tennessee. 154 left. Chakuma, the power runner of the two tailbacks, stopped immediately. And a timeout called by Tennessee. Billy Ratliff, Eric Westmoreland in on the tackle. One timeout remaining for the number one team in the country in trouble in Knoxville. Second down and 11 for Arkansas, 147 remaining. One timeout left. Call it 12 to go for the first down. Sterner lost the football! Oh my goodness! He stumbled and fumbled, and Billy Ratliff recovered! Sterner comes out away from center and it looks like Brandon Bullsworth, number 77, the big guard, tripped him up. He was on a backside protection, Bullsworth was, and he just tripped on the quarterback. Travis Henry. Well in the field goal range now, down at the 28-yard line. With 1.35 to go, Melvin Bradley made the tackle. First down, Tennessee at the Arkansas 28. Now, Sean, one of the things, if you're, if you're Arkansas, you got to be thinking about your own timeouts. You don't want them to kick a field goal with no time left. you got to be thinking, do I call, when do I call timeout? And you're right. And the earlier you use them, the better. Your offense needs time, not timeouts. And we, again, think back to the decision to use the timeout before punting moments ago. Henry has a huge hole. Travis Henry inside the 20. First down, out of bounds, or is he? Yes, they will stop the clock, perhaps just to move the chains. But the play goes to the 13. Sean Bryson, number 24, again with a great block on number 37, Zach Painter. That's what did it for Travis Henry. Everybody's cheering for Travis Henry, but I love those fullbacks. 184 yards, far and away a career best for Henry. He did go out of bounds. The clock is stopped with 115 left. From here would be about a 30-yard field goal for Hall. And they'll be conservative now. The Henry Bridge tackle fight down to the two-yard line. First and goal, Tennessee. Melvin Bradley saved the touchdown. Nut calls timeout. Full house backfield. Will Bartholomew an extra pullback in as they send Bryson out to the wing on the left and he comes in motion. Henry to the right. 
Stopped short of the goal line. Stopped at the one-yard line. Kenoy Kennedy and Randy Garner made the tackle. It's a great effort by the Arkansas defense to keep Travis Henry out of the end zone. He breaks it outside here. Watch the white shirts try to keep him out. He's so strong. He just falls forward all the time. Arkansas elected not to use a timeout here. Bartholomew remains in the game. Bryson joins him in the backfield this time. Henry, up and over. Touchdown, Tennessee! After the touchdown for unsportsmanlike conduct against Tennessee. It's a four-point lead right now. For the volunteers with 28 seconds left. A touchdown drive after the Sterner fumble. Five plays, 43 yards. All Travis Henry over a minute and 15 seconds. Well, he's been to workhorse this afternoon. What a great effort going up over the top. to sacrifice in his body to get that ball into the end zone for Tennessee. of the Tennessee sideline moments ago. They looked like a team that thought it had been defeated. No question about it, John. And then Lady Luck turned. It was a... They're just going to take a knee on the extra point play. It would have been a 35-yard try. Philip Fulmer apparently didn't want to block and a run back. So they just take a knee. The way this is going, that celebration might be premature, but certainly Travis Henry deserves congratulations. Jeff Hall's kickoff to Hubert Loudermilk. Loudermilk is also a track athlete at Arkansas. He can run, but he slips down at the 18-yard line. 21 seconds left. And flags fly in late. And it's for a personal foul against Arkansas. Frustration perhaps showing on the part of the Hogs. Dead ball. Almost a 200-yard day for Henry. 197 and 32 rushing. First down. Well, Jamal Lewis, one of the best backs in the country, but pretty nice when you have a guy like Henry to come in and take his place. Oh, you think about the depth of tailback that Tennessee does have. Arkansas has one timeout left. They certainly have the long strike capability with the passing game, although they'll be facing one of the prevent defenses of all time in this instance. Three wide receivers to the right. Anthony Lucas, the only one to the left, and he'll double him up as well. Stern in trouble. And he's across the line of scrimmage now. Sterner needs to get down in a hurry. He does, and they'll stop the clock to move the chains with nine seconds left. And he's got a timeout here. He'll use, use the timeout. I ask you this question. We would he have been better off getting up and spiking it quickly? No, probably doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter, John. I think, you know, you look at this game. This has been a classic titanic battle between two really good football teams and both of them have had their moments in the sun during the day i mean it's been unbelievable and it's it's really it's it's too bad anybody's going to lose because it's just such a titanic battle and i think excruciating for arkansas they led all day led the number one team in the country on its field all day long and a very strange fumble turned this game around. It did look like Tennessee was just about dead and buried. And it was almost a miracle that that fumble came from Sterner. You know, that's the truth. It's, it was like it was just fate or yeah. something like that. You know, it's football. I've seen it time and time again. And you look around the country, it's so hard to stay undefeated. And Tennessee's number one for one week. And look at the struggle they got. But they're playing a really talented Arkansas team. Sterner out of the shotgun. 
Receivers running everywhere down the field. They tried to run the lateral play, but Lucas dropped the ball. He was going to catch it and try to lateral it to Michael Williams running underneath, but you have to catch it first. And Arkansas is down to its last play, barring a penalty. Three seconds left. And they have officially 68 yards to go, 67 yards to go for the winning touchdown. With the three man rush, Sterner caught by Lucas, but he's on his knees, and that's the game. Philip Fulbert. Played under his lucky stars. They were very fortunate to escape for the victory over this devastated Arkansas team.